Hi, everyone. Welcome to the timingresearch.com crowd forecast news for June 20th, 2022. We are recording this at 1 p.m. Eastern time, and this is episode number 347. And uh, normally we either cancel or move the, the shows on market holidays, but uh, we have a big event coming up tomorrow and uh, through the rest of the week. And um, so we wanted to have uh, you know, this preview episode. So all the guests for today will be doing presentations on this week's event, and uh, I'll talk more about that later. But uh, my name is David Cosmeter. I'm the creator of timingresearch.com, and today I have arranged for Sonny Harris and Norman Hallett to join us, as well as the option professor is back to moderate. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to him. Okay, great. And uh, welcome everybody here today. Uh, we're going to have a great show because there's a lot going on currently, and there's obviously going to be a lot hitting the fan in the weeks ahead. So we're going to try to cover a lot of information for you. And we've got two fantastic guests with us, uh, Sonny Harris and Norman Hallett. And uh, before we get started, let's introduce ourselves, um, um, starting out with Sonny. A little background on yourself, Sonny, and what's going on at Money Mentor. Thank you. Uh I am a mathematician, a trader, and a programmer. I've been a professional trader for 41 years. I'm a mentor, tutor, and consultant, and an easy language programmer, and the author of six best-selling books, and I'm working on the seventh. I have a free Sunday night newsletter called Sunny Side of the Street, a free live trading room every Tuesday morning at the crack of dawn, free forums, a free podcast, and I love to teach people how to trade. Perfect. And you get into all that stuff and your sunny bands a little later in the broadcast, correct? I'll be happy to do that. All right. Now we got Norman Pall uh, Hallett and uh, Norman uh, has a, a very um, um, extensive experience in all different forms of investing, but he does focus on the mental part, which anybody who's ever done investing uh, knows that that's a huge part of it, the psychological part. So uh, Norm Hallett is going to explain who, a little background on himself, but also what he's doing at his company. Well, thank you for having me, and it's an honor uh, to share the virtual stage with Sonny, who uh, has been a mentor of mine secretly uh, for years, and um, uh, so I'm really glad that, that she's here with us today, as well as the option professor who uh, always keeps things going in the right direction. I, uh, I grew up in the option area in the 80s, and, um, and then I was, went over with uh, Payne Weber, did, did uh, some work with stocks, but I was primarily a, a, a uh, commodity specialist for them. Um, and when I left the corporate world, I decided to, uh, to do what I thought was the most important thing. And that's help traders with the mental and emotional part of trading. You know, there's a lot of good trading plans out there. Uh, even the good ones can make you money. But if you don't have the mental and emotional wherewithal to follow your trading plan, um, none of it is going to do you any good. And um, there are... Um, uh, a lot of books out there and so on. The problem with, with books is that they, uh, they tend to uh, get you excited about uh, making a change, but they won't help you make the change. They'll pretty much get you frustrated. So we use certain meditative techniques as well as something called EFT uh, in order to um, uh, help traders to move from out of control to in control so that you're not your own worst enemy when you trade. Um, but I do have a lot of background. I also uh, was a math teacher and a mathematician in my early life. And, um, and so um, I'm always drawn toward the chart. So uh, it's part of my life. And, um, and, and I, lo I love helping people to make it part of their life, too. Perfect. And uh, you'll get into exactly how people can get in touch with you at the end of the broadcast so uh, they can take advantage of what you can bring to their, uh, to their trading. Um, just uh, before we get started on anything, I just wanted to hit this question that um, somebody had put in. It's an options question. It might uh, help many people who are listening. So let's start out with the question. It says, um, uh, if I had a put option that was in the money by $5 at 2.30 p.m. Now, I don't know what the relative importance of that is, but uh, we'll continue. And uh, that is after a rally up. So the market had rallied. And but the but the option is five dollars in the money, and at two thirty the stock starts to decline into the close. So now it starts going down. Should the option increase in value, 
or can the option decrease in value at the close and show a loss of $120 because of illiquidity? And that was on Friday the 17th, <laughs> uh, June 22. Well, I'm going to assume a couple of things, not, assume things not in evidence here, okay? I'm going to assume that this option expired on that Friday and there was no time left in it, or it had very little time left in it. And basically the idea here on options is, is that they have a premium. Uh, they have an implied volatility time premium, and then they have a thing called intrinsic value. Intrinsic value is the difference between the current value and the price and the stock. So if the uh, current price of the stock is under the strike, it's in the money. If it's above the strike, it's out of the money on a put. Now, mm -hmm. again, the time premium and the implied volatility premium has got to come out of the option by expiration. So when you see a market go in the money, meaning below your strike on a put, yet the option might even be losing value, it is because it's losing the time premium and the volatility premium, and they're only going to give you intrinsic value. So it has nothing to do with illiquidity, I don't believe. In my opinion, in this particular case, it's, a, it's the idea of when you pay for an option, you're a buyer, you're going to pay a implied volatility and time premium, and then you're going to pay for intrinsic value, if any. And as it goes in the money on a put, it's under your strike. They're going to take that time premium and volatility premium out and ultimately just give you the differential between intrinsic value. Okay. If you have any other questions, optionprofessor at gmail.com. More than happy to help people on this. Again, I passed my registered options principal exam series four about 30 years ago. So it's not something I just have a passing knowledge on. <laughs> uh, and uh, that's the end of that. So let's go into what's going on as far as uh, what we're going to talk about today. It is Monday. So Monday is where is the market? Uh, well, actually, from what I understand from the futures, can anybody verify this? Uh, the futures are up about um, 40 points at around 37.11 or something. Does anyone have? Uh... On the ES, the futures yeah, are up 40.25. E okay, so where just, are we at? 30, close. Where are we at? 37 what? 37.16 even. Okay, so that's going to be our line in the sand because that's where the market, uh, even on the overnights, is trading 37.16. Okay, and it just closed. Yeah, well, that's good. Uh, where will we be on Friday versus 37.16? Will we be higher, lower, or about the same? And we do this every Monday, and uh, we're going to start out with Sonny. What are you seeing, or what do you think? Are you going to be sharing your screen, uh, Sonny? If you'd like me to, I can sure do that. And then we can see those bands. Okie doke. All right, you, should, you should be able to now. Yeah. Get there a peek at those bands. It'll give us a little idea of what's cooking. Well, this green chart shows you the daily ES, and it shows me that it tried to go up a little bit today from the lower outer band. Yep. I've got a light blue line in the sand right there that says that's as high as I think it's going to go. And then subsequently, I think we're going on down a little bit more. Okay, so by Friday, do you think we might be a little bit higher? Or do you think by Friday, this thing may pop on Tuesday and Wednesday, but then have a rougher time by the end of the week? I think it's going to have a rougher time by the end of the week. And then, and then we've got tomorrow and the next day, we have bed guys talking. Yeah. So that could, depends on whether they say 0.5 or 0.75, what the market's going to do. Well, I did notice the bond market was down about uh, 20 points um, uh, today. So uh, the rates were, uh, the yields were rising today. Um, there you go. On, you see. on market's down a little tiny today. Yeah, down a tiny bit. Anyway, so you're thinking it might be a roll, it, it will be a little lower than 37.16 by the end of the week. I'm thinking it might. Yeah. It, you know, I, I trade really short term, so I can't guarantee that kind of thing on a daily basis. Right. Uh, I keep my powder dry and, and uh, shoot quickly. So. Yeah, and this is a rough time to make a decision anyway, because you um, have very little technicals under the market because you just made the lows. Right. So it, it, uh, when you're buying into the abyss, uh, you know, it's kind of a rough racket. Yeah. So anyway, um, on Norman, how do you how do you feel uh, we're looking here as far as uh, 3716 and Friday? Uh, I'm wondering, uh, I, I could use uh, Sonny's chart here. I could share my screen. It really doesn't... Uh... Either way, uh, I'm looking at the bonds here. 
No, uh, this should be ES. ES. Oh, that's the ES. Can we get a little, um, uh, a little closer, uh, like the first one you had, just expand it a little bit. You know, um, it's it may be with with uh, with Sonny's um, um, mapping on there with the green lines. It may not be quite as easy to see, but you can see how the market uh, when it had a top there in uh, in April. Um, where it, uh, it it's coming off that uh, the top that was before it, you can see how it uh, it, it has an extension down, then goes sideways. Yeah. Uh, if you if you move uh, over here, toward the right. Uh, no, go go no, to no. where you were. You're talking about uh, that like was just a, a double right top. But if you angle, yeah. you see how the market oh. slides down and moves sideways, then slides yep. down again, moves sideways, slides down again, and moves sideways. Now, of course, the movement then was a rally, but then sideways, and then a movement down to where we are right now. So. Um, you know, the markets tend to have a particular rhythm. Um, and um, so, you know, this is, I see a lot of sideways movements this, this week. Yeah. Um, I think the market is still lower. You know, I talk to traders on the mental and emotional issues and, and they can't help but tell me what they're feeling about the market. And um, I, I think that from, from what I'm gathering, uh, from an emotional standpoint, the the um, I think there's too many people here that believe that we're near the bottom to believe that we're near the bottom. Yeah. I think we'll um, uh, you know after this sideways accumulation, we we I think the the favored direction looks lower. I think any technician would tell you that, but we'll we'll have to see. Um, but I I'm looking for sideways movement. If I had to, um, if if sideways is not allowed. I'm going to, I'll no, just no, it's a, it's a, it's door number three. Okay, good. Then I'm going to go with the side. I don't, I, I just don't see a whole lot. Um, yeah. You know, we've had the response from the three quarter um, percentage uh, um, movement higher. I think we've, you know, the give up last week was the, uh, was the market's response to that. Plus the, uh, the guidance that well, we may see something uh, of a similar nature uh, over the next couple of months. So I think that's in the market. I think we're looking for something else to give us a new direction. So I'm, I'm going to go with sideways there. Yeah, you have a lot of people who are, keep harping on how um, uh, consumer sentiment is very weak and, uh, and investors' um, uh, intelligence is showing a lot of people are bearish. But another guy made a good point is everyone's talking bearish, but if you go look at their accounts, they're still loaded up on stock. In other words, nobody's really uh, sold out of their base positions or whatever thing. And so uh, the combination of everyone uh, thinking every time it goes down to a certain number, we're at the bottom. And the combination of many people saying they're bearish but haven't sold their stock. Could, mm -hmm. that, could that be a little of the fuel you're thinking, uh, Norm? Yeah, I, 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 I think so. You know, I, I, I let the, the chart do the talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, in this particular case, um, you know, I, 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 this is not a market where you want to try to fish for a bottom yeah. without some sort of confirmation. Yeah. Um, in fact, I see, you know, even in in, um, in in Sunny's guidance here, you're seeing how we're hugging uh, the bottom, uh, that bottom line that uh, that really shows weakness without being without being over overly weak yet in other words there's some weakness left you don't see any punches through those kinds of lines before they um you know which which is a better indication that we may um you know, may have some sort of a snapback but uh, you know when you ride lines like that if you do it in bollinger with um, with um, sunny's work it usually tells me there's more more downside left so we'll we'll see what happens yeah you know that pe ratio has been a pretty good um, friend for the macro kind of an idea of where we're going. Cause you know, the stuff at the end of the day has a factual basis to it. And uh, the earnings on the uh, S and P supposed to be $2 and 30 cents this year, if they don't cut mm -hmm. them and 16 times is basically where we are now. And so mm -hmm. that Leon Cooperman, who's uh, down in your neighborhood, uh, Norman, right. uh, he uh, was saying that uh, these things tend, it's a pendulum. And if we were at 21, 22, and then 15, 16 is normal. And the pendulum sometimes overdoes it, maybe towards 14. Mm -hmm. but I think that's where people are getting the 3,200 number is if you take the 230 times 14, you're in that 3,200 handle right. area. Mm -hmm. So, and that might be the area where all these people who say they're bearish and have been saying they're bearish, maybe actually do something, you know, <laughs> because, um, you know, again, uh, it'll be interesting to see. Anyway, uh, with regards to things that are coming up this week, uh, Norm had mentioned a couple of things, uh, uh, but Sonny, what are you, uh, what are you seeing this week as far as news events or anything or anything you're looking at behind the curtain 
fundamental well, the, or technical? Yeah. The two behind the curtains to me are uh, the FOMC, what's his name? Bullard? Bull, Will, yeah, Bull, Bullard. Bullard, yeah. Yeah, whatever that is. James, <laughs> James speaking, Bullard. Yeah, he's Bull, already Bullard talked, bear, I yeah. guess, today. Yeah. And then we've got tomorrow at 9 a.m. Eastern, we've got another Mester speaks. Okay. Uh, so those are the two that are coming up that I'm watching. Just here. Uh, and it's can... not about what they say. It's about how the people react to what they say. Right. Right. And uh, Norm, anything uh, you're seeing uh, fundamentally, technically that, uh, you know, you're kind of keeping your eye out of for? No, you know, I, I, I think, um, you know, look at the give up on in the last week or the end of last week into um, actually the, the, the week before you see those three bold uh, candles on the way down. That's uh, um, you know, that's, it's a lot of energy still in the market, I think on the downside. So mm -hmm. no, I, I, as far as the reports are coming up, I think, um, you know, you got to look at the FOMC stuff going on, but, um, again, I think that the, it's going to be how much pain people can take in the short term. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm just hoping that I'm, I'm trying to explain to people not that don't to, to kind of quell the expectation that all of this is all going to just come right back. Some of these highs uh, that were made uh, like from Amazon and uh, some of the uh, tech stocks, I don't believe you'll see those highs again for several years. Um, so I, I think uh, I think traders and, um, and investors both have to be patient here and, um, um, and just let the technicals tell you what's going on instead of guess. Yeah, and uh, there's a real reason behind what you're saying, because they're only going to earn so much money in a slower economy, and they're not going to go back to 22 times PE unless the bond market collapses and goes back down to 1% interest. And those, both are the slim and none are those two chances, and slim just left <laughs> town, right? Right, and I, I think that's what people are doing, just holding on to their holdings and knowing that the market eventually comes back. So they're just yeah. waiting for that comeback and holding what they've got, because who wants but, to get rid of the losses right now? Yeah, but if we got a break um, substantial under where we are here, uh, we'll test that resolve, I think. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Um, with regards to um, uh, different areas of the market um, on stocks, um, you want to put some charts up um, because uh, Norm is mentioning some of the big uh, tech. And, you know, some people are thinking sure. that uh, large cap tech like uh, that have moats around their business. That would be uh, Google, Amazon, excuse me, Google, Microsoft and Apple. Can we look at those three and see if there's any uh, technicals uh, that would might say that those companies are getting cheap? Actually, this needs to be G O G L. And uh, Google is uh, going to be uh, splitting twenty for one in a few weeks. Right, mm. right. Of and course, that, that didn't uh, do Amazon very well. I bought a little bit of that; it popped a little bit. I dumped it, and now it's right in the soup again. So you know, uh, bu <laughs> right. buy, buying this, buying the split, you still better keep it on a short leash in this environment. You know. Yes. So, which one do you want to see, Apple or Google? Uh, well, we'll start with Apple. Apple. I said Amazon, sorry, I didn't mean to say Apple. Apple's uh, down, at, I call these line, these orange lines, I call uh -huh. them attractors because yeah. they tend to attract price to them. And you can see why I drew it over here. There's a confluence of price right around that line going up, down through it, up, back through it, back down through it, back up through it again. Mm -hmm. So that's an important line and that's right exactly where Apple is right now. Yeah. We'll see what it does tomorrow morning when it opens, but... Um, Looks now, what if, like what if you did a what if you did a five or a ten year chart on it? Uh, is there any lines underneath the price that could uh, be viewed as a net? Uh, hmm. Not there, really. Right here, this yellow dot shows you a little bit, one hundred and seventeen yeah. sixty something. Yeah, that's about and it what, until we get down to here, which is eighty two. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Um, that, that was that's actually, frankly, the number that I have that I'm looking at. But it seems odd to think it's going to drop 50 bucks. But, you know, odd happens. It. Odd happens. Sometimes. Yeah. Uh, what about on um, uh, Google, which is going to be splitting 20 for one? I had about an eight, uh, 1900 to 2000 low on that, possibly. Here, hang on one second. So. And you had a what? I had something like 1950 to 2000 as a potential place where um, it could get washed out. We're right now. Yeah, we're right? not too far from it. 21, 
yeah, 2114. Mm -hmm. And the attractor beneath, well, there's an attractor right here. You can see off these sideways prices like Norm was mentioning. Mm -hmm. So that's where we are right now. Next, next attractor is right down here at 1808. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, everything's screaming that it can go on down, all of them. Yeah. I have a scan that I ran on last week's show that um, shows all stocks in the S&P 500 that are above their 2150 and 200 moving averages, 200 day moving averages. You scanned them, yeah. I yeah. ran them. I ran it last night for my sunny side of the street report, and there's not a single stock that's above all three now in the mm -hmm. S&P 500. Wow. The only thing that was above last week were the energy stocks, and now they're not even above all three. Oh, believe me, I was going to get, I will get into that in a minute because uh, people are running around, um, you know, pushing people into energy here, and we're going to take a look at a couple of charts on that. Norm, any uh, other uh, uh, stocks that you're kind of looking yeah, at? Yeah, I guess I'm seeing more pain than than a lot of people, um, maybe, although the lines that, uh, that Sunny just drew are somewhere in the area. I mean, generally, you know, I, I I don't know. This is I don't know if this is an old school idea or whatever. But when you come to monumental areas like 2000 um, in Google, um, generally you're gonna you break. You got to look at, at breaking that. The market will break that and take all the stops out underneath. Uh, I mean, traders, especially new traders, will say, "Well, at 2000, uh, if it goes under there, I want to." you know, I want to be out because it could mm -hmm. really get bad. And so they'll put their stops in it, you know, 1999 and 1995. And then some smarter mm -hmm. trader would make it 1989, you know, just to clear, let those stops clear out. But yeah. generally, I, you know, you could see 1900 uh, and, and even 1890 in a, in a breakthrough. And then the snapback, mm -hmm. uh, I, I just, I don't know the stops that are, we're not qu quite close enough. I don't know. We used to be able to tell what kind of stops were underneath there. But, um, you know, that kind of wa washout, um, that's the kind of thing that, you know, that makes headlines. A and then, th then that's probably the first sign that, that we're about to have a, a rally of some, uh, some consequence. But uh, I don't see the 2000, I, I think 2000 becomes a, a, a target here and, um, and then it gets broken. There's a lot of new traders out there. I think Sonny knows that. There's a lot oh. of people with very small accounts uh, especially, you know, after COVID, uh, they're new at this. And the kind of logic that I just mentioned is, is uh, it can be prevalent, especially with new traders um, um, that get, you know, stopped out and then, and then the market uh, comes snapping back. So um, I see that kind of action somewhere. Um, mm -hmm. But until then, I just see sagging lower markets. That's, How about uh, Microsoft? So is, it, is the Microsoft you know, look the same? I want, I'd like to say one little thing first. Yeah. Uh, Norm knows as a mathematician that uh, 2,000, 3,000, those numbers are called natural numbers. Mm -hmm. And they're really, really strong attractors. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. Naturally. Naturally. <laughs> <laughs> Microsoft. Same story. Yeah. They're all... Uh... They're all on They're the cliff. Huh? Now, Microsoft, though, has, let's go back to the daily chart for a second. It has something else going on here. We've got another one of these little sideways pieces right in here. Yeah, yeah. But see, there's that dot, and that's right exactly where we are right now. Right. And 240 would be the natural number, or 250 would be a natural number right here, and it's below mm -hmm. that. So maybe we're taking out norm stops here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the 10 year wow. note uh, hit 345 yield. So if you start seeing a 350, 360, you know, I think uh, that could be sayonara for this stuff. So I uh, guess staying under 345 on the 10 year would be very helpful to these things, I think, right now. But these three stocks that I mentioned was because uh, people do think there's a moat around the business, I mean, who's going to create the next Microsoft, Google, or Apple? And they've got tremendous free cash flow, they got a tremendous balance sheet, they got recurring revenue. They got high margins and the good uh, good uh, growth. So, I mean, if you were ever going to start looking for uh, uh, stocks in an environment that's getting washed out, I mean, these three, you know, clearly would be the ones to keep an eye on, you know? Mm-hmm. The FANG stocks are always good. Yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, particularly, particularly those three, maybe not the Netflix as much, but, uh, you know, because people can get tired of uh, 9 million choices on their uh, TV probably. 
Right. Pick one. Um, let's look at the U.S. dollar um, because oh, there's a couple. There's a couple. Of, yeah, there, there's a couple of things, and I don't know how Norm feels, but you know, my feeling was is that uh, 2020 was the top of the bond market. 2021 was the top of the uh, uh, stock market, and I think this 2022 is going to be the top of uh, possibly the dollar and uh, some of these commodity markets. So I was going to just take a look at the dollar. And get an idea of what you guys think. What's the is symbol it, on that? Uh, DX uh, is it? If can you get DX? Uh, why, a DX? Oh, yeah, I don't yeah, trade the dollar, so I don't know that one. Yeah, so it, it went up into this 105, 106 neighborhood, and that's uh, pretty much as high as it's been in 20 years. And yes. um, and of and course, it up wow. several days that retracing that one, two, three, four, and it's it's bounced up. Here we go, an almost flat DMA line. Mm -hmm. And it bounced right off of that. That wouldn't surprise me then if that continues to bounce upward. Yeah. But so uh, if it got under 103, you'd consider that uh, breaking down a bit, right? Right. 103, we're going down. Yeah. So, you know, the jury's still so, out, but, uh, you know. We've got equal strength pulling on this DMA and on the two upper bands are both pulling on it right now. Uh, let me, oh, I'd like to ask you. There. I yeah. want to ask you something about your about your uh, your process here because it's been so accurate for, for so long. Just wondering, you know, I uh, when you in that in this particular chart that you see, uh, when a market tends to hug that upper line, I think there's always confusion out there about whether it's you know people sit there waiting for it to be overbought when it gets up there, um, you know, five six days ago there. Uh, and as opposed to understanding that that may not be the case in which you just have as a very strong market, uh, right. that's not to be sure. How do you differentiate in your system between that? What is that telling us? Well, uh, here's what you mentioned right here. Look, see, it goes up to that upper line and mm -hmm. then it keeps going and going and going and going and going. It just keeps following that upper line up. I, I read the sunny bands and act only on confirmation by price. Mm -hmm. So if, if we're going up, I would never go short until this thing moves decisively below those two bands. Right. Mm -hmm. So here it tries, here it tries, here it tries. And now mm -hmm. we've got a decisive movement under them. So that's going down right there. But I, I, uh, I look first at the DMA in the middle, so gold and purple lines. And mm -hmm. they're easier to see if you look down at this histogram. You can see that gold is on top when, when the gold lines are above zero. Mm -hmm. When they're red, it's telling you gold is still on top, but it's getting closer and closer to that dynamic moving average. Mm -hmm. gotcha. So these tell me gold on top and these down here tell me purple is on top. If purple on top, it's, it's the macro view is short. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you know, all traders, uh, you, me, everybody with experience constantly looking around and, and seeing, is it a possible double top here? And mm -hmm. I think that's kind of where, where, uh, where the option professor is playing off of a, a bit here. I mean, you always look for that to be a possibility. Um, but I, I think, you know, certainly the jury's still out here. It looks, it's, we'll have to see what goes on, but. Uh, oh yeah, no, the jury is definitely still out. But I tell you, you know, if you're looking forward to have a big drop to a hundred or 98, because things change dramatically, right. it has to start with a stop making new highs. Well, that's, that's happened so far. And mm -hmm. then it's got to break underneath the uh, 103. Mm -hmm. And then it's got to stay okay. down there. You see how, uh, you know, it only stayed at 101 and then it was right back on the bicycle. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you'd like it to stay under 103 for a little while and get these lines pointing down like the stock market's pointing down. Because when those exactly. lines are pointing down, we're going down, you know. Mm -hmm. So I just think that uh, keeping your periscope up on this is, uh, is not a bad thing because the whole mm -hmm. world seems to be bringing up their interest rates. So we're not the only game in town on that anymore. And also our economy has been the strongest around. And, you know, if that were to change a little bit, uh, that could be another factor. What about that yen uh, that you watch sometimes, Norm? I mean, that thing is at, uh, you know, 25 year lows. I mean, uh, and yeah, they are talking about changing their, uh, they might even raise interest rates over there, which would be a shock. But um, is there any What's value the to the yen? for the yen? Let's bring up a, a JY. Chart. It's either that or 6Y. Six, uh, six I, I don't know which system you're in. JY is usually JY. doesn't. But uh, if you look at, is that the daily? That's yeah. the daily. I mean, look what at that. You? I mean, it's 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 a sickening chart. Um, <laughs> it's funny how so, it depends on where you cut it off. But uh, that's a that's 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 a move from eighty eight to say you know that's that's a movement of, of 15, 20 percent since 
um, you know, since November of last year. Um, that, that's a big move for a currency, you know, but Japan is really not known for handling their, you know, the strength of their yen very well. Um, you know, their economy has uh, been rolling around even for years, you know, with very, mm -hmm. very small increments of, of change. Uh, and I, apparently they're pretty satisfied with that. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, from a, a, a chart standpoint, you can't buy this market yet. No. Um, no. But, um, uh, you know, I think yeah, part I of the wondering. part of the issue here could be the Taiwan issue mm -hmm. um, that that's kind of hanging over here. Mm -hmm. I, I think if that gets cleared up, it could help help the yen form a base because, um, you know, that whole um, that whole situation, um, just watching, you know, Ukraine and and uh, and having uh, she look at what's going on in Russia and deciding whether you know the, the world is ready for uh, uh, for invasions and and um, and are willing to accept it without you know um, you know without a strong response. I mean, we're sending weapons there and so on, but they're watching what happens there because she wants the uh, he wants Taiwan mm -hmm. um, in and, a big uh, way. And he want, he, he's got Hong Kong already, which was one of my favorite cities, still is. Um, I haven't been there since, but uh, and I've been to Taiwan also, and they love their independence. So uh, and that's going to be a that's going to be a real issue. And I think it's hurting the Japanese yen. So uh, I like it. I'm like Sunny. I, I don't trade the markets uh, from a, um, a, a, a a pullback standpoint. I'm, I'm I trade off the two and five and. If I'm in a relaxed state, sometimes the 10 minute chart, but I don't go past that. Uh, I, I do. I do look at tendencies. You know, I do as far as I think that um, I don't know if we've ever discussed this. And the, the idea of uh, of um, of position sizing as being uh, really one of the main is, is really the second best besides stops main tool for. Um, uh, for keeping your risk under control. Mm -hmm. And when I see a market like this, I, I can tend to um, amplify my positions on the short side and go with the trend as a, and, and anything long, um, I'm, um, you know, I, I take minor positions. So I, I will let it influence me on in that, but I, it won't, won't stop me from going long in the short market, just, just how much exposure I have when I get my signals. So mm -hmm. um, you remember back in the late 80s, early 90s, I think, there was a book called, I think it was called Yen, and it was purporting that the Japanese market was doing so incredibly well that the Japanese were going to take over the United States. And a lot of people I knew were trying to learn Japanese at the time in preparation. That I didn't saw. happen. I saw. Yeah. Um, I, uh, well, I, you know, that time it was, everything was made in Japan. You know, right. I mean, the whole the whole respect about they did everything. Right. Uh, Japan had quality coming out of there. Uh, so, you know, the world world definitely changes. Let's uh, uh, let's take a look at the energy markets, because to me, um, okay. it seems like some of these stocks. Let's look at uh, Devon DVN. I mean, people uh, are buying this stuff like it's money market. And uh, I think uh, they should take a look at this chart here. Oh, uh, the, this is a long term chart. How about we get one? Uh, because you can see from the long-term chart, it's hitting a longer-term resistance there. But uh, you know, well, this thing, this one. thing's gone from eighty bucks to fifty-eight, and uh, you know. But look at this. Yeah, I mean, you know, right. and that, right. and right. and everyone that. is uh, everyone's touting the energy shares. Yeah. They're touting the energy shares as, as a you know some kind of a safe uh, haven. Well, they don't see anything else to trade at the moment. Yeah. I think. yeah, I mean, but it doesn't look like a safe haven to me. It doesn't, does it? See where yeah. that cursor is sitting right near? There's it's the like the direct opposite of a safe haven. Yeah. yeah, 51 is the is the downside on that one. And yeah. it's at 69 right now. So right in here, we've got 51.35. Looks like to me, it's going there. And that that is uh, the all-star. That's one of the all-stars in the group. Um, the other um, one uh, might be PSX, which is a uh, leveraged uh, one a little bit. Have you recommended any options in, in the? In, well, in the I recommend when they're up at one, when we're at the high point, you do a collar, you sell the out of the money call, you buy a put, and at least you've frozen your equity at a certain point. And, uh, or you get out at 110 and you take a few bucks and buy some call options in case you're wrong. And then you lose on the call options, but the rest of the money's in your pocket because this thing had a huge move. I mean, now and, look at this. and look some at this of them are high. much bigger than this. Like Devon Energy went from 30, 40 bucks up to 80. 
you know, you get out, you take a $50 gain and you throw in a $4 option and then it goes down to 58. You're kind of a happy guy. Mm -hmm. So these are the moves you got to make uh, unless you're just going to be like that little feather in a uh, forest gump where it like floats in the air, you know, and that's your, <laughs> that's your equity, you know? So I'm, I'm more of a school of um, if you catch a fish, uh, make sure you get it on the boat, you know? Uh, so on anyway, the vertical lines where this turns red on this mm -hmm. Instagram, you see gold, 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 telling me gold's on top and I should be yeah. wrong. Yeah. This red bar right there says yeah. that's mm -hmm. the short signal. Look where price was when it gave that short mm -hmm. signal. Yeah, right up yeah. here has to be confirmed by price which it mm -hmm. does on the very next bar and there's the short signal and one if thing about energy no, purple, Norm, you, yeah do you guys believe this i mean we we uh, in the in the in our history we go from there is no energy to there's a ton of energy for a ton of energy now we have no energy so you know right now it seems like there's absolutely no energy out there and uh, since the world is round uh, you know it seems like the next story might be uh, hey we've got energy now you know what i mean Mm -hmm. Well, we're in a process now of, 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 of redefining what energy is. I mean, we've yeah. talked about this before that we are going from the industrial revolution to the uh, technological revolution and, and energy is, is really part of, uh, you know, getting away from carbon oriented energy and, and into, uh, you know, the alternatives and as the alternative costs come down, uh, you know, th but there's investment in, in the old way of doing it. So there's always anger and, um, you know, what do we do with all those jobs? All those jobs event 20 years, 30 years from now are going to be obsolete. And so, um, and, and, you know, I think people, I think the, the, you know, the Saudis are, are investing their money, not in new wells, but in alternative energy, because they understand the importance of energy. And yet, uh, you know, here, you know, they know that, um, uh, that this could be like some, somewhere near the last hurrah for them in, in carbon energy. So, you know, I, I think you're going to, it's going to stay volatile um, for a while. And, um, and which brings me to options. And I wanted to ask you about it. You, the, the person who asked the question um, and talking about intrinsic value, I think that, that, that traders, especially new traders have misconception that in the money means it's safer. <laughs> right. right. You know what I mean? I mean, in the money, just, I mean, you can do that on the last day of the option, you can do the math pretty easily on an, on an, on a, um, on an option. If it's a totally intrinsic value, just, you know, measure the number of dollars times a uh, hundred and uh, how many contracts you have. And, and there's your, that's what you're going to have at the final day. But, but if you count on, uh, you know, once the market starts moving more intrinsically, it's going to eliminate that any kind of time value pretty quickly. And you're going to be left with, uh, with just that math. Um, so, you know, I just don't think, I think that, that I, uh, the smart option player does collars and things on, uh, does combinations. Um, uh, but I think they realize that, um, you're better off, um, taking out of the money positions and, and looking to capitalize on your move rather than, or, you know, or selling them, depending if you're selling or, 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 or buying options. But I think that, um, you know, intrinsic is doesn't mean safe. It, it does have what intrinsic is good is, is with combinations and with other kinds of options that we don't have time to explain right now. But um, I just wanted to make that point because the way he was framing his question, he, somehow he felt there was safety in options and couldn't believe the closing price, you know. Well, I just don't know. I just don't uh, think and many people understand that that time premium that you buy has got to come out of the option by expiration. So there is a there is a uh, pandemonia on. Uh, I mean, I see these guys uh, on TV and they'll tell you this option expires in four days. This option expires in five days. This option expires in two weeks. Well, listen, guys, that is the teeth of the time decay Black and Scholes uh, model. So you are buying into the teeth of that. So if you're not right and you're not right right away, mm -hmm. that's going to be a problem because that time premium you bought has got to be gone. So even if the market goes up on these uh, options that they talk about, you still have to go, go above the strike plus the premium just to break even. And, you know, fighting time and price, uh, they generally win over time. So, you and, and you gotta, you gotta continue to give yourself time. These weekly options, there was a study done in Brazil. Um, I was doing an overall study on does do 10% of, is it only 10% of traders actually win? Is that true? And, and that winds up to be uh, with studies that have been done in Europe and so on. Uh, that happens to be a true figure. The, but, but there was a Brazilian study when I was taking a look at it, where 97% of traders uh, were not successful and 
uh, in that study in Brazil, the, the people who, who was who investing in weekly options did so poorly that they, uh, th that they outlawed them in Brazil and a lot, a lot of countries in South America. So when you're buying options without a lot of time, you're just, you know, you're, you're playing a guessing game, you know. Well, we uh, will uh, we'll eliminate short term options, but we replaced it with draft kings, you know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, the in the money option, I will comment on this one um, uh, strategy that some people do with the in the money is like, say you're looking at PSX as a theoretical example, uh, stocks at 90. So if you bought like a 75 or an 80 call that's in the money uh, and you went a year out. Some mm -hmm. people would do that in lieu of buying the stock, and then they would sell the shorter term 100 calls against it, and then they would get their premium back that they paid for the 75 or 80 by mm -hmm. selling the out of the money calls. So if you're doing an in the money strategy where you're buying a year out or two years out, and then you're going to sell shorter term options against it, there could be some value to that. Uh, doing it uh, rather than uh, purchasing the stock because you know 100 shares of 80 is going to be eight grand and the option might be 800 bucks or something mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. so the uh, bottom line is is yeah there are different ways to use the in the money options but uh, uh neither of them uh, would be considered less risky they're they're both uh they're both they both need the market to go up and uh, again uh, you do have to put up substantially more money when you put up the uh, mm -hmm. when people are speculating you know generally a little bit out of the money on the calls a little bit uh, under the strike price, uh, under the current value on the puts, will get you the uh, nice big action. Mm -hmm. When you get further, uh, then then you're talking more home run derby at that point. But uh, anyway, uh, with regards to um, uh, we we hit the oil. Let's hit this gold real quick here before we uh, run out of time because gold is very interesting. Um, I'm seeing this 1800 number as like a huge number, and if it breaks that, it could be sayonara. But if it gets above 1900, 1950, you know, it could uh, it could get back on the bicycle. Uh, what do, what are you seeing, Sonny, on this? Well, we've been going sideways basically. Yeah. Here's the yeah. attractor where the cursor is right now. Right. So we're so we're looking at 1792 as a low. We've right. got a really flat dynamic moving average in the center. The DMA is just going across and price just keeps trying to hit it, trying to hit it, trying to hit it. It goes yeah. fairly above, back down again, trying to hit it again. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what it's going to take to make it go above, but I still am positive on gold. Yeah. You know, maybe it'll take something like, um, you know, um, uh, these, in uh, the inflation numbers go nuts and the Fed uh, doesn't, uh, you know, starts going to quarter points or something. I don't know. It, it, it'll probably need something or like you say, the China. But I mean, we had a war and it hadn't done anything. So and we had oil. We had, we had oil China, to, yeah. If China tries to attack Taiwan, we're involved. We've agreed to, to uh, defend them. Oh, OK. Then that might be the uh, that might be the thing that makes it go. It just um, you know, Norm. Do you have a feeling on the gold here? Yeah, because no. I mean, there's nothing to say other than you 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 know, you know, you you think it's an inflation hedge, and, and it it kind of still is. But you know, what people don't know is uh, don't remember is that sometimes it takes a year you know a year out to. Um, but I think uh, for it to show it's uh, it's it's not a predecessor. It, it tends to react after the fact. But I will say that. Um, that I think gold has also been a victim of selling the good with the bad as uh, some of these, as Bitcoin has in a lot of these um, markets that, that generally are not, uh, um, not hurt so much by high, uh, you know, high in, higher interest rates or higher inflation seems to be offsetting. What I'm saying is that when you're losing a lot of money in the stock market, you you look for other markets that are, uh, that, that didn't show weakness to, uh, so I, I think that the the, the tendency yeah, this doesn't uh, pay any this doesn't pay any this doesn't pay any yield then that's a problem. Can you throw up Newman Mining because that's what's making me feel like the market on the gold could uh, could have a big break to the downside. Yeah, NEM -E 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 NEM NEM, and this is the Cadillac of gold stocks. And I did very well on it from fifty two to eighty, but I'm glad I got out of there at eighty. So um, yeah. yeah, this uh, the, I mean is it, this thing. Um, you know, if it were to break under 60, uh, could that be uh, the Sayonara sign or? Well, it's the, the tractor is at 65. And then below that is at 59.27. Mm -hmm. So I think if it breaks that low, I think it's going to use all this congestion over here to the left. I think it's going to use all that as support. 
Yeah. I don't think, I really don't think it'll go below that. Although of course it could, but. But it's lost a lot. It's lost a lot of altitude. Oh yeah. And when things lose a lot of altitude, maybe there's a reason for that. And uh, maybe they're not going back to the 85 price uh, anytime soon, unless like you say, you get an event, um, but I think you've got a very good number there around 50, uh, around 50, uh, 59, 57. Yeah. I mean, this has shown considerable weakness uh, compared to gold. And the reason is because higher, uh, one of the reasons is because higher, uh, I mean, you need energy to dig. And, okay. um, yeah. you know, their bottom line is just doesn't look real good. Uh, if this right. price of gold is stagnant and the price of energy is higher, it's, right. it's going to, you know, uh, so I agree with well, Sonny. People, I think we're headed people for that. got out of gold. They thought they were going to Bitcoin as the uh, safe haven. Yeah. But Bitcoin did, certainly didn't turn out to be the safe haven. And now I think that they're going to realize Bitcoin is going on down further and they're going to have to start being interested in, in something with more value like uh gold has it it's something you can hold it does have natural value well one of my theories of investing is is when things get underneath 10 bucks you're buying an option so like when chrysler Mm -hmm. years ago went to five you know you take your Mm -hmm. shot Uh, when freeport mcmoran went to eight you know we're not never going to use copper again so you take your shot and it goes from eight to 40 or 50 right now Mm -hmm. ethereum e-t-h-e seems to be that kind of story because it's a platform with many uses and it's, uh, and it's trading, uh, e- well, ETHE is the, um, is the ETF, ETHE, there you go. And you can see it's, uh, it's at the seven mark and, yeah, um, right, you know. So we've, got, we've got a head and shoulders right here uh-huh. and the head and shoulders goes down like this, right? And typically that head and shoulders is gonna be broken by this amount. Now, if we take that amount and put it down here under this, mm. you know, it should go some lower still. It's in fact, no, it's off the okay. chart at that point. Yeah, cause it was at four bucks yeah. I noticed about uh, five years ago, if you had a five year or 10 year graph on it, I think it did go, it started its run. But like, this is the neighborhood. If you ever had an interest in this stuff, you know, there you go. You see a bunch of fours. Yeah, fours. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I was thinking between four and seven, if you're a long term accumulator, I mean, for God's sake, if you're willing to pay 50, you know, and if you, if yeah. you think this thing, if this thing has any kind of future, you know, um, you, you can't run out of the building at four and seven if you were, you know, that makes perfect sense. You know, so yeah, I, I still I have my protractor and for that move right there. <laughs> we used to put our, our pin right there and, and turn that protractor around. That's how you get that spot right there. Yeah, I still have all my old tools, including the <laughs> Ehrlich Cycle Finder. <laughs> Do you have one of those? No, but I, I, I'll I buy it from you. <laughs> well, not from me, you won't. It's priceless. Yeah. <laughs> but you can call Stan Ehrlich. He, he has them. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, do you guys think, uh, I mean, I see a 325 number there, but I, the lowest I see on your chart is like uh, 428, 423. So yeah, where is it? Oh, there, there. 428 is right back in here. Right. Uh, this, this 428 actually goes with that dot up there. This 239 is printed on that bottom dot and 260. Yeah. So yeah. right about 260. Uh, like I say, anything uh, under anything uh, seven bucks or less, I mean, it seems to me like you're buying a call you option that, that never expires unless they go out of business, right? Yeah, you can't go wrong on that. So, and and uh, there's too many commercial uses of Ethereum for this to go to zero and never show up again. Now, there's a, really there's one area that actually you're going to I think you're going to see all these averages are under and rising. Can you believe you can find one? Well, I, I think there is one. Put up FXI. And I think you're going to find on some of the, well, this is a long-term stuff. Let's go it's, back it's to all uh, squeezed up, recent, so let's got, go to recent history here. There you go. There you go. So, you know, is there something to be said that this could be uh, hanging in there? Yeah, that one's looking, we've got a, a tractor right here. It needs to get above that line, which is at 33.50. Okay. And if it goes above the line at 33.50, then we're, talking back up into this level right here, which is around 37, 
38 right in there uh-huh and and it this thing tends to do do a little jump and then go sideways do a little jump and go sideways yeah so we've got a one two three well, we could go up into 36 pretty easily here how about k web k w e b kind of the same story yeah you know, but def of, definitely is trying to get on its feet a little bit, it's right? It's trying, but right there is that attractor again to coming back from here. Yeah. See, there's that same so thing. So it gets above but, there. It could uh, it could be in the uh, in the wide open field, huh? Could be, and we could go up to from 32 to 40 pretty easily if we get above. You're using 30. big words for a three dollar move, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, what about DD? Last one, DIDI. -D -I. This is my idea of a good time. Put up two bucks rather than putting it on, uh, you know, uh, Secretariat in the. Uh, you know what? Uh, we found that last time we did this, we found that there's a different symbol. Oh yeah, DDIY, isn't it? What is it? I'll look at it over here real quick. You sure, it's not Dodo. No, DIDIY. -D -I -D -I Just put DIDIY. -D -I -D -I Norm, my theory is this: there's six billion people living in China. Doesn't somebody need a ride? Yes, <laughs> you think. But they've got they bicycles. Want. Well, the, and with the gas prices, wouldn't they want to jump in a car and get there fast? You know, it's maybe just they're the government it. control thing, you know, where they yeah. take a business away and then they put it back. They give Ugh. incentives and then they take it away overnight. It's a tough. Yeah, no, this, no that's the whole that's a whole problem with China. And uh, despite the fact that it looks like it's turning up. But uh, some people who are pretty sharp say uh, China did their reset which means they took out all their billionaires. Um, uh, their uh, real estate is in the tank. They didn't do a lot of printing during the crisis. So they got a lot of money they can print now. So if they print money and they get off the backs of uh, the corporations, because they've already done their common good scheme, right? Then maybe this stuff could go. And DD used to have to be off your devices and now it's allowed to be back on your devices. So based on all of that and a couple of bucks a share, I mean, you know, it doesn't seem like, uh, you know, it doesn't seem like the worst thing to ever think about, you know? Well, the most interesting part, I well, a couple of interesting things about Shanghai when I was in China, they have, the streets are so crowded with traffic, but it's part cars, part bicycles, part rickshaws, part motorcycles, and there's no lanes. Uh, it's wild. Yeah. This could easily move from a dollar, what are we, dollar 38 to seven, seven and a quarter right there. Well, that's why they call it speculating, Sonny. That's right. <laughs> that's why they call it a risk investment, you know? That's Eating. right. But no, uh, no to, uh, I mean, only, let me only put it invest to, uh, risk capital. I'm a simple minded person. These guys do ride sharing like Uber. They've got six billion people who maybe need a ride. I figure it's not a bit dynamic. You know what I mean? DD, <laughs> yeah, DD shop, this. mashed potatoes. DD. Sounds like baby talk. Hopefully it's baby talk at eight bucks, right? That's right. There we go. Now we'll know what that is from now on. All right. Nice now uh, we are running to the top of the hour, Sonny. So it's time for you and Norm to tell everybody how they can get a hold of you and what they're going to get when they do and how you're going to help them uh, hopefully do better. Oh, so, let's uh, uh, let's let Norm go first because he has to. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah sure. Oh, good, lead, right. Hey, good point, David. Norman, you're up. Oh, wow. He remembered. Um, <laughs> I, I just I just wrote a special white paper um, on um, seven steps that you can take to eliminate the fear of losing. We found that fear of losing. Uh, well, we know the fear of losing is an, an important issue uh, with uh, to most to a lot of traders detriment. But the fear of losing translates itself into a lot of other fears and horrible actions like chasing trades and and um, um, revenge trading and so on. So I, I wrote a paper uh, on fear of losing and it's about to come out, but I, I wanna get some copies out there uh, as a preview copies. It'll come out next week. And if you'd like a copy, e email me directly at admin, AD, like administration, A-D-M-I-N, at thedisciplinetrader.com. And uh, just say, send me the report on fear of losing and I'll get it to you today. Uh, so that you can read it before the crowd. But the fear of losing is something that you don't want to be a victim of with markets the way they look. Volatility creates um, unsure nature to those that are undisciplined. But to those that are disciplined, volatility is really extra opportunity. So this is the time where, where professional traders 
um, are really focused on uh, on their trading plan and running it the right way. If you're finding fear of losing is keeping you from doing that, admin at thedisciplinetrader.com and I will uh, I will get you that report. Perfect, Norman. Thanks a lot for being here, buddy. Uh, thank and, you. Uh, and thank you, Sonny. God, I always lo love to be with Sonny. I learned I'll so much. You thank more. you. Thank you. Okay, Sonny, you're Thanks, up. Um, can you let everybody know uh, how they get a hold of you and uh, what you're going to try to do for them, in including really, the Sunny bands, right? It's absolutely. It's really easy to get a hold of me. It's moneymentor.com. It's one of the longest live uh, websites on the internet. It's been there since 1995. And I've got my phone number and my email address right there on the top of every page. I'd love for people to give me a call. I'm at 760-908-3070. And I don't do hard sales pitches. Uh, um, again, I'll yep. just reiterate, I'm a mathematician, a yep. trader and a programmer, been trading professionally for 41 years. And I love to teach other people how to trade. Perfect. And um, as far as option professor is concerned, we do have a PDF report on how to hedge against market declines, as well as upside surprises. And it's something we've encouraged people to get since last year. So obviously knowing how to hedge against the down move would have come in very handy. So go to optionprofessor.com, submit your information, and we'll get a hold of you and uh, talk to you about how you can get that PDF report. Uh, Sonny, thanks a lot uh, for coming out here today and uh, we appreciate it very much thank you well the trip wasn't very long <laughs> that's right <laughs> okay you, and uh, david uh, we'll send it back to you and uh, thanks everybody for attending let's have a good week ahead and uh, we'll talk to you next time all right so yeah great great show today so just a quick reminder for everyone be sure to subscribe to timing research on youtube and your favorite podcast app and you can also just go to timingresearch.com to get access to um, uh, today's post as soon as I can get it ready, as well as any of the past, past shows and events. Um, and I uh, just want to thank my uh, guests again for today, Sonny Harris of moneymentor.com and Norman Hallett of thedisciplinetrader.com and uh, the option professor of optionprofessor.com. And uh, all of them are also doing presentations on the Synergy Trader event this week. So be sure to join us tomorrow. Uh, that's Tuesday the 21st, as well as Wednesday and Thursday. Um, and this event, the theme will be a different uh, type of trading each day. So tomorrow will be options trading and Wednesday will be currencies trading and Thursday will be futures trading. So you can always just come to timingresearch.com and you'll see uh, the link to access the room. We'll be live from 10 a.m. Eastern time until uh, 8 p.m. Eastern time each night. So, so uh, be sure to join us for that. And uh, all right, that's it for today. Thanks everyone. Thank you.